Praise the Lord. Um, this is um, Sunday school for um, the college students. We have been doing, we haven't been doing Sunday school, but we want to take this time um, to do our Sunday school. So I'm hoping that all of our Sunday school students will be watching. And um, maybe send me some comments about some of the, the questions that I ask. I know you can't answer right now. But it'll be good if you answer, and then that way we can keep track of what we're doing. Um, today's lesson is going to be on prophecy about 70 weeks. That's the title of our lesson, prophecy about 70 weeks. And the main truth is God works through intercessory prayer to draw people to himself. That's the main truth. That's what we want to get out of this lesson today that God works through intercessory prayer to draw people to himself. A memory verse is found in Daniel 9, verse 16, which says, O oh Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem. Isn't it so appropriate, this memory verse, for this time that we are in, that we should be praying intercessory prayers to God so that God can take away fury from our city because the Bible says um, if the, my people who are called by my name if you are called by God's name which is if you're a Christian you are called by God's name you will humble yourself and you will pray and God said that he will heal your land so our memory verse again is found in Daniel 9, 16. O oh Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem. And you can add your own city to that and say from your city, in our case is Chattanooga. A little bit of a lesson overview. The title of this lesson is focused on a revelation made to Daniel by angel Gabriel that 70 weeks of passing time and events were determined for the Jews. However, the first two parts of the lesson are about Daniel's prayer that preceded the revelation made to him about the 70 weeks. Therefore, most of the lesson is devoted to the consideration of Daniel's prayer of intercession for the Jews. Daniel acknowledged that their current status as captive in, ba in Babylon was a consequence of previous sins. So he confessed the sins that had been committed by the Jews, and he asked God for mercy and restoration for the Jews, and God granted his request. God always grants requests, whether it be on your timing or on his time or whenever the prayer will, the prayer will be answered because God answers prayers. Three points of the lesson. First one is prayer of confession. In that prayer of confession, um, you want to make sure that you confess your own sins before God. The second point of the lesson is prayer for restoration, which would include turning away from sin and praying for God's favor. And the third point is God answers. Um, a message will be given um, in 70 weeks of years. Um, uh, uh, will have passed through the answering of prayer it's God will give you revelation when God answers your prayers he always gives you revelation three points I want you guys to come out of this lesson um, I want to make sure that you recognize that intercessory prayer needs to be motivated by the needs of people and the desire that God's name be honored when you are praying for somebody you, you intercede for that person, but through the will of God, not through your own will or through that person's will. I'll give you an, a, a, an example. If you're praying for somebody who's sick and that person is not yet saved, the main prayer should be that that person gets saved first and then get healed because that will be in the will of God for that person to be saved. It's in the will of God that all be saved. Amen? So if you're praying, you want to make sure that your intercessory prayer is motivated by the needs of people and the desire that God's name be honored. 
The second part um, that I want you to learn today that we want, we want you to come out with is to cultivate in yourself an appreciation for the importance of intercessory prayer as a ministry to others in need of God's help and blessing. We want to make sure that you appreciate the importance. When you're praying for somebody, uh, don't just pray out of the top of, oh, yeah, God, just bless so-and-so, and then you forget about it. No, realize the importance of praying, of intercessory prayer for others. When you're praying for somebody, you pray for them the way you would pray for yourself. And then the third thing we want you to understand is to make intercessory prayer for your fellow Christians and for those who are unsaved as part of your daily prayer. First, you got to have a prayer daily for you to have daily prayer for others. If you don't pray on a daily basis, I tell my children when you get up in the morning, before you get out of bed, pray. Even if it's five minutes, even if it's, you know, three minutes before you get out of bed, because most likely once you get out of bed, you would have gotten so used to doing other things that you forget about prayer, amen? So we want to make sure that you pray every day and intercede for others. There's a whole scripture on here on our lesson, but we're not going to have time to read it, but I want you to know about it if you want to read it on your own term. It's found in Daniel 9, 3, 4, 5, verse 16, 17, verse 21, 22, 24, 26, and 27. Those are the, 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 the verses that we're going to be covering with this Sunday school lesson. It's found in Daniel 9, 3, 4, 5, 16, 17, 21, 22, 24, 26, and 27. Introduction to the lesson. What is intercessory prayer? What do you think intercessory prayer is? Uh, people think of all different kinds of ways that's intercessory prayer um, when they think of praying for somebody. But what is it to you? What do you feel that intercessory prayer for you is? You see, there are five things that is included in prayer, okay? The very first one is praise. The second one is thanksgiving. Third one is confession and repentance. Fourth one is petition. And the fifth one is intercession. These headings define the kind of praying that's being done in each instance. And although intercession is listed last, this does not mean that it's less important than the others. But we do want to remember that prayer starts with praise. The Bible says, come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Don't enter into God's presence just any way you want. You know, some people before they pray, they're doing all kinds of stuff. They on the phone and you know they're cooking they're doing all kinds of stuff and then when they get into the prayer the only thing oh god bless me no you want to make sure that you first acknowledge god for who he is remember jesus gave us the way of prayer he says our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name that's the very first thing you got to do in prayer is to recognize the presence of god give god the praise that he deserves let him know that you recognize him as the God of heaven. And then you can go on to the rest, which is thanksgiving and then confession of your sins. Repent of your sin. And then after you've done all of that, then you can petition God for yourself and then intercession for others. Amen. So um, intercessory prayer is very important. The very first point of our lesson is prayer of confession. That's how we start. We start the lesson with prayer of confession. We're going to talk about sinful people. You see, Daniel, on chapter uh, Daniel 9, verse 1 to 14, it says, Daniel was among the first Jews deported to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar in 606 BC. At that time, he was in his late teens. Guys, he was in his late teens. He was like 18, 19, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's how old he was. When we read the Bible, sometimes we forget that these people, the situation or the positions that they were, they were your age at that time when he was deported. 
He was among a choice group of young people, well-educated Jews related to the royal family descended from King David. This boy was just not any boy. He was, he was special according to the, 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 his time. He was, his family were, were titled people. His family were wealthy. So now he's put in a position that he's coming from wealth. He's coming from a position of authority. He's coming in, in from a position of, 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 of honor. And now he's being brought in by Nebuchadnezzar, basically as a slave. So in Daniel 1, um, 1, 1, 14, he says, when the metal Persian Empire succeeded the Babylonian Empire in 539 BC. Daniel knew the captivity of the Jews in Babylon was nearing an end. How did he know that? Daniel had read the book of Jeremiah, the prophecy that the Jews' captivity in Babylon would end after 70 years. So he had pre-knowledge. Why? Because he read. Very important. Some of you don't like to read. You want to sit on that Facebook. You want to look at funny stuff and things, and you don't read. You don't remember they said history will repeat. It's if you don't read, you don't know what's gonna happen, and you cannot be prepared for it. So after the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonian, both Jeremiah and his assistant, the scribe, his name was Baruch, were taken against their will to Egypt. There, Jeremiah died. According to the ancient Jewish sources, after Jeremiah's death, Baruch migrated to Babylon, brought with him the writings of Jeremiah, and gave them to the captive Jews in Babylon. So Daniel was one of those people that received the book of Jeremiah. So knowing the captivity of the Jews would end soon, Daniel gave himself to earnest prayer for the freedom of the Jews foretold by Jer Jeremiah would come to pass. Daniel knew that what he was asking of God on behalf of the Jews was in keeping with God's will. Therefore, he fully expected that his request of God would be granted. Listen, a lot of us are praying against that coronavirus situation. We know this stuff's got to end sometime. Well, it's time for you not just only to pray for it to end, but you are to pray that God would use this moment so that people will come to know God. Listen, this is the best time in the world because listen, churches will be individual churches praying. They will be on their own in their own little congregation, the blacks with the blacks, the whites with the white, the Hispanic, the Indian, everybody was in their own little time. This is the only time that we know in the century where the whole church, the universal church is together praying in the waves, in the airwaves, through Facebook, through YouTube, through Instagram, everybody is sending our prayers. So the whole world is being bombarded with prayer so pray right at this moment she says with the purpose in mind of making confession to God on behalf of the Jews first Daniel acknowledged the greatness and faithfulness of God that's how you start your intercessory prayer you recognize that God is great that God is good that the, the, that God is worthy of your worship if you don't recognize God for who he is, then you're not going to believe that God is able to answer your prayers. A lot of us, we pray to the air. We pray just in case there's somebody up there. But no, there is a God who answers prayers. There is a God who's listening to everything that you are saying, everything that you are thinking, every way that you are acting. There is a God, and he is taking notice of who you are. So when you recognize him for who he is, then you can invite him to answer your prayers. He said, and that his purpose in prayer was confession and repentance. Daniel engaged in the custom related to mourning in his culture, fasting, wearing sackcloth. Oh, fasting. You know, you young people don't fast anymore. You don't even know what the word fast means. It's very important for you to fast. You say, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. The Bible doesn't say to do all of that. Yes, it does. When you fast, you remove yourself 
from your daily activities. Some of you are, are so engrossed in your in, in, in Facebook and in, 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 in funny stuff and all of that. Your mind is so full and so bombarded by things of this world that you need to take some time to just pull away from all of that so you can get in contact back with God. You need to fast. Listen, fasting doesn't mean you have to not eat. That's what a lot of people just assume fasting means. No, you can fast from a lot of things. How about fasting from your phone for a day? Or maybe fasting from, 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 from TV for a day. Fa you know what? Some of you cuss all the, fast from cussing for one day. You can, you can make a connection with God and decide that you're going to fast to God when you want something for God and you give up something and you say, God, I'm going to give up that stuff so you can answer my prayer. So the Bible says, Daniel engaged in the custom related to mourning in his culture, fasting, wearing sackcloth, scratchy clothing, um, made of goat's hair, and sitting in ashes. Daniel mourned because he understood that the capacity came as a result of the sinfulness of the Jewish people. So he recognized that, not that he sinned, but that others around him, the Jews, might have sinned. So uh, in John 14 here, I want to bring that to your attention. He says that it, it, he, uh, um, Daniel, when Daniel f uh, uh, prayed and, and, and fasted, he says he expected that his request would be um, answered by God because he prayed something that he know would be God's will. They gave us a reference here of 1 John 5, 14, 15. You know what it says? It says, First John, it says, if you see a brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. There's a sin that does not lead to death. So if there's a sin that doesn't lead to death, guess what? There's a sin that leads to death. And the apostle, Paul, the apostle said here, if, if there's a sin that does not lead to death, pray for that person, but he doesn't want you to pray for the sin that leads to death. I thought that was kind of interesting. You might want to go over that yourself and see why he would say that. So that was our first point, prayer of confession, sinful people. And then the second one is a righteous God. There's a sinful people, but there's a righteous God. Praise God for that. The Jews had lost the land in the city that defined their nation. And in addition, those who had been taken captive to Assyria in Babylon, most of the other Jews were scattered among the nation. Why had this happened? Daniel was brutally honest in speaking to God about this. You know, I read today, somebody says, well, if God is so good, um, um, and then he showed a picture of a bunch of children dying, um, 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 not eating, if God is so good, why is this happening? Well, maybe it's happening because you're not doing your job. God is a good God. He answers our prayers. He's a good God. If God doesn't answer a prayer, it's because he knows you can do it. So he's going to let you do it because you noticed it. Amen. Why has this happened? Daniel was brutally honest in speaking to God about this. The Jews had been unfaithful to God. Sin had brought suffering and shame to all of them, from the rulers to the common people. So Daniel appealed to God for the Jews, not on their merit, for they did not deserve God's mercy, but on the basis of God's own character, and that he extends mercy and forgiveness to undeserving sinners. Remember, God doesn't owe you anything. God doesn't owe you anything. You don't deserve anything from God. If God does something for you, it's because he is a good God. If we're in America today and we can eat and we can sleep at peace and we can laugh and have fun, we have access to internet, we have all of that, it's because God is a good, not because you deserve it. You could have been one of those kids in Africa. You could have been one of those people in uh, Iran and Iraq where, where people are dying. You could have been some of those people in China where the government doesn't care about them. But no, God placed you in a America not because you're good but because he is a good God and he wants you to recognize that he's a good God and he wants you to publicize it that he is a good God and he wants you to pray for the others to let them know that God is a good God 
Daniel confessed to God that leading up to the captivity, the Jews had refused to heed God's prophet who called them to repent and return to God. Therefore, the curses of sin inscribed in the law came upon them. The blessings and cursings of their covenant relationship with the Lord had been spelled out clearly. But this, they had chosen to sin, forfeiting God's blessing and bringing on themselves the curses. God was righteous in executing his judgment against them, for they had refused to live for him. You know, we, 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 we are so ready to say that God is not good. We are so ready to say that God doesn't do this. God, does. What about what you haven't been doing. What about the time when God told you not to do a certain thing and you did it? And then when you have to pay for the consequences, then all of a sudden God is not good. But God was the one who told you not to do it. You went ahead and did it. That means you say to God, I'm men enough. I can take the punishment. See, anything that God tells you not to do and you decide to do is because you know you're strong enough to take the punishment. And Daniel recognized that the Jews, they did what they were not supposed to do, what God told them not to do. So when the punishment came, they had to suffer the consequences. But he also knows that God is a good God. That if you can repent of your sins, if you can go down on your knees and, and ask God for forgiveness, as a good God, he will take away the punishment because he is a good and righteous God. I'm going to re read a, a response to the word for you. It says, God still requires obedience in his people. God still requires obedience in his people. God says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We are commanded to love God supremely. And if that is our endeavor, we will also endeavor to obey God's words for his own glory and for, his, for, her, for our own well-being. God has wisely commanded us to love him. God does not command that we love and obey him because he wants to deprive us of anything that is truly good or good for us, but because he wants us to but because he wants to save us from sin and destruction. God knows and we are wise to know that sin ruins everything. God gives everything that is good while sin destroys everything that is good. Listen, if you're living in sin, no, there is nothing good about sin. It's only good for a minute. And then it's a lifetime of pain. So we're going to go to our second part. Remember the first uh, uh, point of the lesson was prayer of confession. Daniel prayed and he prayed, he believed God and he expected that God would answer his prayer. And he knew that God is a righteous God, that God would not, would not hold us, hold our sin against us. That if we pray and we confess it, that God will answer our prayer. The next um, point is prayer for restoration. Daniel continued in prayer, asking God to forgive and restore the Jews to himself and to their lost land and city. In asking this, Daniel reflected on what God had done in the past for the Israel, uh, Israelites, his ancestors. When they were slaves in Egypt, God had brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand. So God is, uh, 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 prayer, the prayer for restoration through Daniel, Daniel is saying that if God did something for you in the past, know that he can do it again. Daniel became specific in his prayer about what he wanted God to do. He prayed that God's anger and fury over the sins of the Jews would be lifted from Jerusalem. God, guys, if you read the Bible and you see some of the things that God has done, if you watch your ancestors, you watch the, your family members, and you watch certain um, um, testimonies that people have, have, have given, you know that God is able to do this stuff. So when you're praying for restoration, you can believe believe that God can restore he can bring back everything that the enemy had taken from you God can bring it back he can give you back your life amen prayer of restoration okay prayer of restoration so when you're praying for God to restore you listen you can't go back to the same thing what would be the point of God restoring you only for you to go back to the same thing? So that's why when you ask a prayer of restoration, it's also a prayer of repentance. 
where you God restores you and you go on with God. You don't go backward. It's like people always say it's like washing your hand and wiping it on the floor. What's the point of washing your hand if you're going to wipe it on the floor? Where when you pray for a prayer, a prayer of, of restoration, you should also be ready to repent. Amen. And the second part of that is prayer for God's favor. Daniel continued with a focus on prayer for God's favor, not just for the relief of the Jews people, but also for the sake of the honor of God's name. Listen, there's some things that God just doesn't want to do. You can pray till you're blue in the face. God, you know, I, I spend a lot of time praying for me to get taller. God just doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Should I get mad for that? No. Because God, God, God bestows his favor on whoever he wants. Why would you get mad that God doesn't give you? Don't you make decisions as to who you want to give your favor to? Well, God has the right to do the same. Not just for the relief of the Jews, but for the sake of the honor of God. Whatever you want God to do, you want it to honor God. Not for you, not for the people, not for the world, not for you to look good, but so that God's name will be lifted up. He says, we are not saved because we are worthy of salvation. Our salvation is entirely God's gracious favor towards us. Listen, I'm not here because I'm good. Or because I don't have any sins? I'm not before you teaching Sunday school to you because I'm good. Absolutely not. I may even be worse than you are. But it's through God's salvation. God decided in his own time that he was going to save me. And because he saved me, now he gives it the opportunity to let everybody know that he can save. It's God's favor. Amen. And then the third point is God's answer. That's what I love. When you pray, first remember, you have to praise God. Thanksgiving unto God. We talked about the five ones, right? Confession and repentance. Confession comes hand in hand with repentance. Don't confess knowing that you're going to be doing the same thing over again. No. Confess and repent. Meaning, you know what repentance it, repentance means that you're not going to do it again. That's, that's basically what it means. And then the last one, petition and intercession. You petition unto God and intercede. Amen? Last point is God's answer. To, you know, I love this. Because Daniel was praying to God just for deliverance. Daniel was praying to God just for the Jews. For repentance for the Jews so that can, so God can deliver them. But listen to how God answered the prayer. He said, God answers to prayer come long after the prayers have been prayed. A short while after prayers have been prayed. Or immediately while one is still praying. Daniel was still praying when Gabriel, uh, with, a, um, Gabriel with a message for Daniel and for the Jews. Gabriel, so God sent the angel Gabriel with a message for, for Daniel and the Jews. Gabriel informed Daniel that he came to give him skill and understanding regarding the future of the Jews. Listen, Daniel was not praying for the future, for understanding, or for skills. God, Daniel was praying so God would deliver them so that when they come out of captivity, that they'll know how to serve God. But listen, God added a little something to it. In your prayers, when you pray for yourself, when you repent for what you've done, when you intercede for people, when you petition God for things, God will not only give you what you ask for, he'll give you a little extra. God will show you the future. Oh, a lot of you, you, you want to know the future, don't you? Don't know. You want to know when you're going to get married, how many kids you're going to have. You want to know if the guy's going to be cute. Ha! Huh? You want the future, amen? If you pray and you ask God to clean you out, to empty you out so that you can receive God, remove all that junk that's all around you, all the, all, all the, the, the thoughts and all these things that are all over your head, remove them, empty yourself out, take a minute, spend some time with God, praise him, recognize who he is, petition him to come, and then he will come, listen, and he will tell you about the future. 
So Gabriel informed him of the, regarding the future of the Jews. By means of Gabriel's message, Daniel received insight into God's plan for the future of the Jews. A plan that would affect the whole world because it included the coming of Jesus the Messiah. Oh my God, how important it is to pray for others. Because when you pray for others, you connect yourself with everybody else spiritually. So now God can show you things in these people's lives. God can show you things of the future. God can show you things that's going to affect your generation. So 70 weeks of years. That's what the, the angel came and told him. He says, Gabriel revealed to Daniel that like as the captivity of the Jews in Babylon lasted 70 years, 70 weeks of years were determined by God for certain events to take place that would culminate in the coming of the Messiah. As told to Daniel by Gabriel, 70 weeks of years were determined upon the Jews, doing which they would learn to abstain from finish with the transgression that has brought them into captivity. Their sinning would be restrained, the end of sin, and the guilt of their past sins taking away. The temple will be rebuilt and rededicated to God. The kingdom of everlasting righteousness will be inaugurated. And those and these events will confirm, seal the vision and prophecy of Daniel. The concluding word of verses 25, the street shall be built again in the walls even troublous time. Met the city of Jerusalem, in spite of many difficulties and much opposition, will be rebuilt a city with streets and walls before the coming of the Messiah. Oh my God. That's what God will do for your life. God will, will take your prayer, He will take your repentance. He would take your petition. He would take your intercessory prayer and listen, and he will rebuild your life. He will put walls around you so that the enemy cannot penetrate. He will build your street. He will, be, he will rededicate you back unto him. Oh, what a powerful message to know that when you pray for others, when you pray for others, God will not only hear your prayers, but he will answer your prayers and he will tell you of what's going to happen in the future god is great amen final response to the word in the old testament there are hundreds of prophecies types and pre prefigurating events that pointed to the coming of jesus the messiah only jesus fulfilled all the prophetic revelations of the messiah's coming nature character ministry suffering death resurrection and ascension all of this is not only our reason for believing that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal, eternally begotten Son of God, but also our reason for believing that the Bible, both Old and New Testament, is God's Holy Spirit-inspired word. The Bible is true and can be trusted. The, God, the, the gospel is true and can be trusted. We must not be discouraged from believing the Bible by the unbelieving world. Don't listen to people who by nowadays who are telling you the Bible is not true. How could the Bible have not been true? When years and years and years, when people believed that the world was round, the world was flat, the Bible told us the world was round. Scientists believed that the world was flat. Till this day, people still believe. Some people still believe that the world, but the Bible said that the earth was round. Huh? What do you know? Look in the Bible. You see some of the stuff that God says. So the Bible is not only true, but the Bible is sure. So you can trust in believing in the Bible regardless of what anybody says and believe in our Lord Jesus Christ because he's the only begotten son of the father. And he says, if you believe in him, you shall inherit eternal life. You also will become a son of God. So today, remember, pray for others. Pray for yourself. Amen. Pray for yourself. Ask God for forgiveness. Repent of your sin. Pray for others so that God can establish you and rebuild you. Amen? Amen.